This weekend, the latest adaptation of Stephen King's Pet Cemetery hit theaters. So today I'm gonna stop and rank all three Pet Cemetery films from the worst to the best. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Sean Chandler, and I love to talk about movies way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down in the comment section. Share your ranking of the Pet Cemetery films. Which ones do you love? Which ones do you hate? And everything in between. As we go into this, as a point of reference, I watched all of these films for the first time within the last two weeks. So I'm going into the older films without any nostalgia, with any background, watching all of them fresh. Also, if you enjoy horror films and you enjoy this video, check out this playlist up above with my rankings of some of the iconic horror franchises. If you enjoy this video, there's something in there you'll love. Let's get started. In last place is Pet Cemetery 2. Now, I had gone into this film having heard from people that it is utter garbage compared to the first film. And so with my expectations really low, I was kind of pleasantly surprised. Now, it's still not good. It's still last on this list, but it was better than I was expecting it to be. And largely because I felt like it actually took the mythology in a new direction, especially with the plot involving an accidental death and teenagers trying to not get caught for what they did wrong. All of that kind of worked for me. But it's a movie that just does not know when to stop or what subtlety is. So it tries to ground the story like the original film did, this time with the idea of the death of a mother, abuse, bullying. But none of this is done with any subtlety. The mother dies as an actress on a film set while her son is watching. The bullying takes place because the kid's mother died. And then as we move later into the film and it takes the mythology in a new direction, you have a zombie person raping his wife. All of it is just, just done so over the top that it doesn't feel relatable and it's just kind of laughable at most points. There's actually a pretty interesting set of actors here in the film, but because the material is so over the top, their performances are likewise over the top, and so everything you're seeing is just kind of corny. It all feels fabricated. And so while it's not quite as bad as I was expecting it to be, it's not good by any means either. As we go into the two adaptations of the actual Stephen King novel, as someone coming in with no nostalgia, I can really appreciate each of these adaptations in different ways. One of them is more professional, one of them is a little bit quirkier and more interesting, but each of them take the material and I think do a pretty good job with it in their own way. So as I go into this, I don't have a strong preference between either one of my top two. Our runner up is Pet Cemetery 2019. This is a very professional and well-made adaptation of the Stephen King story. It does everything that a horror movie is supposed to do in the 21st century, and that's a bit of the problem here, actually. And in doing something so professional and well-made in hitting all the notes a film is supposed to do, it starts to feel a little bit generic. The actors here are all top notch and better actors than those who were in the original film, especially someone like when you get John Lithgow in the mix. But I don't think that actually means they're more effective in the film. While their acting is great, it doesn't mean it's the thing that the story itself needs the most. Case in point, John Lithgow is a fantastic actor and on paper looks like a perfect choice for Judd, but there was just something special about Fred Gwen's performance that elevates it above what you see John Lithgow give here. With all that said, this is still a very good version of the source material. You get plenty of unsettling environments that get underneath your skin at times. Also, they made some big, bold changes to the second half of the film, and I would say that they work, and I appreciate that they did something different with it, and especially as you move into like the final moments of this film, it finds a totally different way to end on a horrifying note. I wouldn't necessarily say it improves on the original in that regard, but it's a worthy addition and a story worth telling again in this fashion. But coming in in first place is Pet Cemetery 1989. As this is a 30 year old horror film, a lot of elements of it have aged pretty badly. And when I first started watching, that's what stood out to me the most. The daughter's acting in the film is really bad. Whenever the Ramon starts playing in this film, it was like getting cold water thrown into my face. And Stephen King's cameo is very distracting. And my friend and I literally started laughing out loud when he appeared in the film. 
which given it's a funeral, is not a good point in time to start laughing. But as it went along and I started to settle in and to understand the movie I was watching, the rougher edges started to become part of the charm of the film, what made it memorable and distinct, and also what made some of the horror scenes so unsettling. Easily my favorite character was Fred Gwen's Judd, who just had such this weird, nuanced character that he just popped right from the beginning. One of these performances that you can't just drop into any film, but fit perfectly into this particular film. And then likewise, the Zelda sequences also popped out to me. At first for production value reasons, which is not the right reason to notice them, but then as it went along, just because it was such a disturbing plot line to put in a movie, and the way it's visualized with the 80s makeup that's kind of very realistic and also kind of very fake at the same time, and just sticks with you in an, uh, a gross kind of way. <laughs> and finally, I think this film explored the ideas of death and grief a little bit better and how early on in the film, the father's trying to explain death to his children, but as you move into the latter half of the film, he's the one being driven crazy by his inability to process death itself. And he kind of hits that a little bit stronger in this film. While I think both adaptations are pretty good, I think the new one played it a little bit too safe, came off a little bit too generic, and the the original went for it a little bit more, maybe at some embarrassing moments, but it's a far more effective film and definitely a more memorable film. So it comes in at number one. Remember to check out that playlist right over there for some of my rankings of some other horror franchises. Thank you so much.